Here I'm showing you a, a sensitive test for copper ions. Copper ions have a color in aqueous solution and if the concentration is high enough, this is 0.2 molar, you can easily see the copper ions in solution. Well, if the solution is very dilute, then you may not be able to see the blue color. So here I've made dilutions of this copper sulfate solution and, and to my eye these are colorless. I have here some concentrated ammonia. It's aqueous and it has a pungent odor which you may recognize. Ammonia is commonly used in cleaning products like Windex has ammonia in it and the chemical formula is NH3. Ammonia will react with copper ions to produce a very vibrant blue color. So let me show you how this works. So here I'll add uh, five drops of the concentrated ammonia. One, two, three, four, five. And as I stir this you can see a very vibrant blue color appears and the intensity of this color is proportional to the concentration of the copper ions. So that happened to be 0 0.020 molar and now I'll try half that concentration. Same procedure, five drops. So that's blue, but not as intense a blue as the previous. So this is a test you can use to determine whether your solution, which may appear colorless, in fact does contain copper ions. And I will leave these out as a standard of sorts. You can see the color lineup is uh, dependent on the concentration of the copper ions in the solution. If you're doing the color test, volume matters. So use one milliliter. You'll remember that the uh, pipette has a line in the middle. So this is one milliliter. And if you transfer that precise volume to your test tube, then this is great for the drops of ammonia, five drops of ammonia. So I will keep the concentrated ammonia in the fume hood here and the color standards in the fume hood. So when you're ready to test, I recommend you use the ammonia in the fume hood because it's smelly and compare your color to these color standards here. Here I have some silver metal that came out of aqueous solution with some ions. So if I want the silver metal pure, I'll rinse with distilled water, washing away ions that are soluble. So it's dripping out the bottom, has ions in the water, so I'm cleaning the silver. And I might have to repeat this to really wash it up well. So now I have silver that's very clean but it's wet and if I want it to be dry acetone can sometimes be used as you can see here uh, it evaporates quickly so if I take this bottle of acetone and now I rinse the silver that's wet with water I'll rinse away the water and then the acetone that's up here evaporates much more quickly than water. Here I have uh, the silver transferred to an evaporating dish and I can rinse it again with acetone. And I can decant the acetone. If I do this well, all my silver will stay here. And popping this in the drying oven should, should dry fairly quickly. It helps if you spread things out so you don't have big clumps. To test whether it's dry, you can uh, feel the texture. If it feels mushy, it's still wet. If it's a little crunchy, then it's dry. This is still wet. Here's my final product. Looks good. Nice, dry, clean silver. Took about 20 minutes in the drying oven. It is important that you recognize acetones is highly flammable, so you can't have any fire near the acetone.